I talk about this often, but I'm hesitant to bring this aspect of it up because I don't want to hurt anybody, but I feel that this needs to be addressed. Tastes and things. Likes and dislikes, in the case of music specifically, food, fashion, aesthetics in general, is subjective. Well, what is subjective? Subjective means that it is dependent on or taking place in a person's mind rather than the external world, based on a given person's experience or understanding and feelings, personal or individual. If music is subjective, which it objectively is, then its effects and affects are internal and personal, unique to the individual experiencer. And I often use food as an analogy, and it seems to work pretty well for the most part, because it touches on something obviously subjective and personal that everyone knows and understands. But music must be abstracted, disassociated from good or bad, objectively, unless we're discussing whether the music in question is performed well, such as the poor live Guns N' Roses MTV performance in 1992, or more humorously with the YouTube phenomenon of orchestral fails. But there's always one type of person that doesn't catch the ball in understanding and run with it. There is, for whatever reason, a holdout. The reason finder. The psychoanalyst. A person whom, for whatever reason, takes a subjective, personal thing like music and mistakes it for a concrete, objective good. Or bad. They do this because they like the music themselves and can't disassociate the feelings they have for it with the fact that others may not feel the same way. And they seem to fail to understand, also, that someone not liking what they like doesn't mean that the interlocutor doesn't like them personally, but only the subjective thing that they like. They can't abstract what they like from being objectively good. So they fish for a reason why someone might not share the same tastes. It's amusing to note that they also don't like music, and they don't see the fallacy when they don't like a piece of music. When the mirror is applied, they fail their own test, and either try to come up with a reason that the music is objectively bad, or usually just say that they don't like it, and fail to see the irony in their statement. With that out of the way as a preface, it is precisely those kind of people that I've been railing against when I call out the blues purists, the music elitists, Rolling Stone magazine music adherents. They are absolutely one of the reasons why I don't like grunge and alternative, but it needs to be stressed that I didn't like it before it became the dominant culture of the 90s. It just gave me another reason to dislike it in the real world. Lyrically, it's very whiny, and often paints the protagonist as some sort of martyr, being ostracized because they are different somehow and that makes them morally superior. It's very Cluster B when you think about it. The vulnerable narcissism was strong with the alternative and grunge types after all. Remember, you can't touch music, but music can touch you. Sometimes it touches a lot of people in a bad place and it helps to ruin a generation. But this is the point where subjective becomes objective, and in closing, I would like to take music and food taste to an extreme by using a modern cultural example. Can you force a person to be gay or straight? And likewise, uh, do you believe in forced conversion therapy for either state? Very question of whether a person in themselves not liking music that you like is an apparent attempt to keep what you like sacred, and it shows you have a vulnerability there. It also shows that you would rather prefer to force someone to eat their Brussels sprouts and insist that they like it or that they must have some sort of psychological problem when the problem is you. Stop it. Get some help. Try to accept that there are other people and that others may not like the things that you like. And, you know, that's okay. I won't hold it against you for trying, by the way. You should. And that's all for today. As always, play faster.